Here to accept the award for the editing team from Terminator 2 Judgment Day is an editor who has officiated 14 weddings. He has, yeah. Let Weird Al Yankovic sleep on his couch, and he was once told by Britney Spears that his fly was down, or was it the other way around, Tracy? What's the truth? Either way, please welcome one of my favorites, Tracy Detlifts, everybody. Check my fly. Okay. Uh, so, Terminator 2, if you're not familiar with it, is the story of a uh, killer robot sent back in time to protect a 10-year-old boy who's prophesied to, to save the world. To me, I think this is fitting because it's uh, what I think is a good metaphor for the editor-director relationship. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll leave the commentary on the directors be, but let's focus our attention on editing, shall we? So I ask you, is there really that much difference between a good editor and a noble killing machine? <laughs> Let me break it down. Say you need to bust your mother out of an insane asylum. I say, let's go. <laughs> Want to take a high-speed motorcycle tour of the LA River? I would say, what size helmet? And don't forget, if you want us to lower ourselves into a vat of molten steel, well, I'd say, let me just get my swim trunks. <laughs> yes, the Terminators and editors have an embedded DNA. They basically share the same prime directive, which is to obey and protect. Now, uh, you're probably wondering, you know, what is it about protecting? What, what is it that an editor does to protect? Well, it's about being in a unique position. Most editors I know will choose not to go to a set, not to go on location. And the reason for that is that if you don't go on set, then you don't know how long it took to set up a certain shot. You don't know that, you know, there was that really funny joke the, D, you know, AD said, and, and I, oh, that take was awesome. And, you know, or the day that the lead actor was being a total diva and everybody was sure that everything he was doing was just totally over the top. So if you don't go on set, then all you're left with is being in your little dark room and you're looking at what's just in the frame, what's just in your bins. It's like that old saying about um, if, it doesn't, if it's not recorded on film or on tape or on P2 cards or you know, whatever we're filming on now, it doesn't exist. And see, the editor has to maintain that, has to protect that little frame and that viewpoint because without it, that's the only view that the audience is going to ever have, is that they, they're only going to see what's in the frame. So um, I could go on about how an editor is also like a T-1000 because more and more they have to shape shift and adapt on the fly. And occasionally do they, they do get their heads blown off uh, by a script change, but then just as quickly they bounce back, ready to kick ass or kill Eddie Furlong, one of the two. <laughs> now last year, Michelle Witten uh, was up here accepting for Thelma Schoonmaker, uh, who every editor in the world just owes a huge honor homage to, and she said that, uh, that Thelma had been locked in mano a mano battle with, with uh, Martin Scorsese for the last 30 years, and that's amazing. But for Conrad Buff and Richard Harris and, um, oh, blank, and I'm sorry, Mark, go back, because there's three of these guys. Um, they were locked in a room with James Cameron for at least 30 <laughs> days. And this is before he was king of the world, Cameron. So, you know, he was, you know, he was kind of going up the way there. But um, uh, I could basically give you some, some breakdown for what all of these editors said about uh, working on this experience. But as an editor, 
I'm just going to choose one. <laughs> so Conrad Buff had a great comment about when people think about editing, that you ask the average person on the street, the mistake that they make is that they assume that editing is just cutting out the bad parts. The thing is, is that editing is actually an additive process. You're adding in all the good parts, and you're trying to make those all synthesize. And so it's truly an amazing creation of trying to make this in a brand new way, making it like the Terminator said in the tagline, the future is not set. So um, as an editor, I think that my most important contribution to this evening's festivities is to keep things moving along. And so on behalf of Conrad Buff, Mark Goldblatt, Richard A. Harris, Jimmy James, I'm king of the world, Cameron, <laughs> and all the killer robots everywhere, you know who you are. I humbly accept and thank the, the, the syndicate for this Felix Award. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>